Chuck Hagel, of course, nominee for Secretary of Defense, former Republican, I mean, current Republican, former Republican senator from Nebraska. So obviously, since Obama's reaching out across the aisle to, to the Republicans, uh, they're going to accept Hagel, right? <laughs> no. Filibuster. Okay, I want you to understand something. This is historic. This is the first ever successful filibuster of a cabinet, cabinet nominee in United States history. Never been done before. From time to time, people would, would withdraw. Sometimes people would lose in a vote. John Tower lost in a vote because he had massive personal scandals uh, that was revealed during the hearings. You know, Condoleezza Rice, they objected to her a little bit. Yeah, the Democrats did, to be fair, right? Why? Because she was the top counterterrorism advisor to the president, and, well, the top national security advisor to the president. And, of course, we had the gigantic intelligence failures under her watch that led us into the Iraq War. But not only did she not get filibustered when she was nominated for Secretary of State, she won 85 to 13. It wasn't even close, okay? 85 to 13. And, uh, and so this, to give you a sense of how unprecedented it is. Now look, remember that they considered reforming the filibuster early on, right? You could do it at the beginning of the Senate session. A lot of progressive senators had asked Harry Reid to do it. And of course, uh, it, all he had to do was go back to history. In 2005, Mitch McConnell had said, now the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, quote, the filibuster was not used for 200 years. The country did just fine. Of course, that was when the Republicans were in the majority, and they wanted to take away the filibuster. Now, you could have just used that quote against them, and you had the numbers. You could have reformed it so that at least they would have to get out there and talk it through, like you see in the movies. They'd have to actually get the yellow pages and do an actual filibuster instead of just snapping their fingers and say, yeah, yeah, yeah I filibuster that guy. Move along, right? But did Harry Reid do that reform? Of course. Of course not, but after they didn't do the reform and they kept the filibuster so the Republicans would continue to have that power, Harry Reid came out and said, no, 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 we're going to have committee in the Senate. We're all going to get along. Dick Durbin said, quote, uh, that is a very positive environment to start this session. It requires goodwill and good faith. So it's okay, positive environment. We're going to get goodwill and good faith from the Republicans. No, you're going to get an elbow right on top of your head. The first successful filibuster of a cabinet nominee in history. So now Harry Reid wakes up and goes, my God, I, wait a minute. I think we might have an issue with these guys. Hey, let me go to video eight here. And after the filibuster, he is shocked and chagrined. The Republicans have made an unfortunate choice to ratchet up the level of obstruction here in Washington. Just when you thought things couldn't get worse, it gets worse. We need to have this vote today. Why? You know, in times like this, it's nice to have a Secretary of Defense. I, I just, when I thought it couldn't get, why would you think it wasn't going to get worse? Of course it's going to get worse. They're Republicans. No, look, that's why we say it. Harry Reid paid to lose. Professional loser, right? So, uh, now, Senator Cornyn cracked me up, though, because he doesn't like the heat. He's a Republican from Texas. He doesn't like it that they've done this you know, unprecedented filibuster. So he's got a unique argument to it. Let's watch. This is not any attempt to kill this nomination. This is not a filibuster. Wait a minute. <laughs> it is a filibuster. It's literally a filibuster. Here, I'll show it to you. Let's go back to video seven. So now this is the vote. Now, remember... In order to confirm, all you need is 50 votes. You know, they could break the tie with Biden if they needed to. 51 will do it. They got plenty, right? Here, I'll show you how the vote went down. On this vote, the yeas are 58, the nays are 40. One senator announced present. Three-fifths of the senators duly chosen and sworn, not having voted in the affirmative. The motion is not agreed to. We got 58 yays. Like, yes, we, yes. No, filibuster. So you need 60. So they could not go forward. By the way, when you ask him, hey, what are you filibustering for? What's the, well, I tell you, Benghazi. Well, first of all, Chuck Hagel wasn't in the government when Benghazi happens. How is he related to this? But let's put that aside. No, the president needs to answer questions. Did he talk to the leader of Libya on September 11th when that attack happened that killed our, uh, you know, our ambassador there and, and other Americans? 
Uh, well, the president told you yesterday you kept demanding. First of all, Lindsey Graham's like, I demand to have Panetta in front of this committee. So Panetta comes in front of the committee. He's current Secretary of Defense. Okay. Oh, you're not good enough. I demand to have Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in front of this committee. So Hillary Clinton comes in front of the committee. I demand to ask hard questions of Chuck Hagel. So then they ask him hard questions, which, by the way, were 144 questions about Israel. Okay. But they're concerned about Benghazi. Okay, so then finally they're like, the president, who did he speak to in Libya during this? And so yesterday the White House says, okay, the president had Secretary of State Hillary Clinton call on that day, the day of the attacks, to the president of Libya, and the very next day he called. They said, oh, well, it's not good enough, it's not in writing. So this morning they write it down and they hand it to the Senate. They go, here you go, here, now it's in writing. They're like, dude, dude, we're going to filibuster anyway. Okay, but it's not a filibuster. So the, even the Republicans can see they're going to lose on this eventually. They're going to have to vote again after a recess. They're going to have it in about 10 days or so. And he's very, very, very likely to pass. So why are they doing this? They're just giving it another 10 days in the hopes that they get something that they hadn't heard of before. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I, I knew it. That was our real objection. Nonsense. Their real objection is they think that he might pare down the military a little bit all those Republicans get huge donations from defense contractors and on the issue of Israel they think that Hegel <laughs> once got in trouble for saying I'm not the senator from Israel I'm the senator from Nebraska how dare you don't you know that even if you're from Nebraska or any other state you're actually the senator from Israel that's your main complaint against the guy so of course the Republicans were gonna abuse the filibuster and they do it immediately right out of the gate you would have to be the dumbest politician in the world to think that the Republicans weren't going to abuse the filibuster after they broke record after record in abusing the filibuster last time around. So who's the guy who thought they wouldn't do that? Senator Harry Reid. Hmm, the lion of the Senate.